an all-star time. Mm -hmm. Those are the only times that you can impact on the show. All-star all -star time if you don't boycott and playoffs if you boycott. And the only times and the only ways that we're gonna be able to make changes because the precedent was set in 1963 with Jerry West and Elgin Baylor at the NBA All-Star. They say they weren't gonna play. NBA made adjustments and they got better pay and better stuff that we could vibe on today. Same thing has to happen. That until a mass number of those football players realize that this could be me. But see, the reason they don't feel like it could be me because they're not taking that stance. And they know that if I take that stance, it's gonna be ramifications based on calling. So if I don't want this 25, $30 million salary that I'm either ready to make or that I'm making to be gone away, I ain't gonna say nothing. And we know silence is violence. Mm -hmm. Simple. Do we take that position, man? And that's the part that my son says, this generation of player has a safety net of salary compared to what we had. You got the safety net of social media. So if we know this is wrong, how many of us gonna say something as fans? Are we gonna not accept the NBA, NFL on the merit of what you're doing? Or are we just gonna support it because we love football? Then that's, that's where the league and leagues, they, they know that it's so many avid just fans that don't care nothing about the politics of it, don't want to hear the politics of it. I just want to have my beer and watch my game. We got that to deal with. And that's the, that's the sad to say, the same type of stuff is going on politically that a lot of people don't, I don't want to hear that. I don't care what Hillary or Trump is talking about. And I'm going to sit on the sideline and let that happen. And many of us who are athletes, we will sit on the sideline and we may have something to say in the locker room, but we are never going to say it where it would affect our pocketbook. And we just have to know that's going to happen. But at the same time, I feel like if we see it going on with Colin, man, we got to step up for it. So I'm definitely going to speak on it because he's, he's speaking on my behalf at the time. So it's cool. Anybody else? How many people read the book yet? Anybody read it? What do you think? Very, very good. Thank What's you. What's your favorite good. part? <laughs> oh. I come from Chicago, mm -hmm. so all of the, how you grew and mm -hmm. you explored becoming, I like the social activism. Gotcha. You're a great basketball gotcha. player, gotcha. but gotcha. the social activism. That's cool. And that's the part that I tell people, for me, the support system and support base that I had, mm -hmm. that, that allowed me to rethink and not, yeah. to, not ever to be at a Sunday dinner and my <coughs> four or five words not being as important as my grandfather. You know, and that my, my opinion meant something. Now as you get older, early they deal with you from, oh, that boy just talking. Now when you go to college and come back, and you sit at the table, you better have something of merit because now they're going to check you, especially my auntie. I call my, I call my auntie Archie Bunker. You know what I'm saying? She was, she was like that. And she had, she had fire and still has fire for a conversation like that. So it was always lively conversations. It was always confidence in that what I'm saying, I know my family got my back. If I go out here and I have a bad game, I know they got my back. It's never gonna be a thing where they gonna let me fall on my face and not give me a hand up. And I think that's the biggest, the biggest thing and the biggest one of the values that I take with me is that knowing that you gotta be able to get that to yours. And how do you build and foster that same stuff in your, in your children and your grandchildren? that they gave me, and that's what I'm working on. So that, that question you asked me about mission, how can I make sure that my sons take this to a level where they ain't gotta fight the battle we fighting, but they, when their battles come, they see what they are and they take them, they stand on them forthrightly and not afraid of them, you know? Anybody else? Yes. Yeah, when you wore the Shiki to the White House, mm -hmm. uh, that was like amazing. Mm -hmm. And then like, I remember when Stevie Wonder put out that song Apartheid, a lot of people gave him a lot of crap too, mm -hmm. and then you know, there's, there seems like there's two type of people like you know, like, like for your instance, they say like what he wore the shikis the White House, and there's other people say, 
wow, he wore the safety for the White House. Mm -hmm. Wonder what's behind that. Yeah. Right. And, and then you're you like black bald. And that's and that's the part that of, of me writing the book is that I saw yeah. people speculate of what happened and what happened to my career and that I was a black militant, I was this, yeah. I was that. And I said it's time for me to write my own story. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the people that I Mike Lufica. Mm -hmm. That's coming here. I want to make sure that I come and check right, him out good. when he comes because yeah. he wrote a he wrote a piece about Craig Hodges and that was one reason I wrote my book. You should come. Because I said, it's okay, how can you write about me and you ain't even holler at I? <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? So from that standpoint, when we look at yeah. me wearing a dashiki to the White House, I wore a dashiki. Check this out. We lost to the Pistons. We cried ooh, like ooh, we ooh, we ooh. cried like babies. Right? <laughs> idiot, idiot. We we vowed we would never feel like this again. Right before we go into the playoffs next season, in my mind, some hit me. We need to ancestor self. All right, because we, we cowards right now. <laughs> so we need to ancestor self. And for me, I'm going to ask the ancestors help by putting on garments. So I wore a dashiki for every playoff game when we won the championship. Nobody said anything about that. Everybody said something about when we went to the White House, Craig wearing a dashiki. Nobody had my back in the press on the team to say, yo, Hodges wearing dashikis the whole time. What's the problem now? <laughs> that we won, we won with him wearing dashikis to the point where as athletes, as sports teams, you're ritualistic. That if you do it this way and we win, you better do that way. <laughs> you better keep. So after about four or five trips and we went, yo, Hodge, what you got? Man, I got a dashiki for every day. How many, many where we go? We got a dashiki for every one. No problem. No problem. It wasn't until we got to a national and international stage that they saw it, that it became more of a, wait, come holler at me, holler. You know, but, and, and people were like, man, Bush got you blackballed. Not me. He was cooler than anybody. Bush was cool to Hodge. When we got there, he looked at me, oh, that's an awesome garment. <laughs> Baby Bush, is, who was the second second president, he thought I was African. <laughs> because when he started talking to me, he talked to me louder and louder and louder. <laughs> yo, yo, bro, I'm from the ice. <laughs> I'm like, I'm from the ice, man, so you can just speak. We cool, you know. But it was, it was, it was, it was a fun experience, man. Just to be able, at that point in time, to know that I was right in my culture. I did what I was supposed to do as far as mission was oriented. That Dr. King, Malcolm, they gave me marching orders. That when I get an opportunity to meet the president, I don't go meeting him with my hat in my hand shuffling and jiving. No, I'll go and meet him on the grounds of this is where you're at. This is the power that you possess. You have the power and the wherewithal to be able to change this condition that I'm asking you. And like Robert always, this brother taught me a very important lesson. He says, when you ask for help, you're not asking for help out of a point of weakness, but you're asking help from a point of strength, knowing that I need to help. So I'm willing enough to be big enough to say, yo, man, I need some help. So when I'm coming into the White House, I'm not asking you, but I'm saying, look, these folks who ain't getting a chance to come from the projects in Chicago Heights, where I'm from, they need help, man. And I think you have the ability to help us do what we're doing. But if not, I'm letting you know I told you so. So it can't be said that you didn't know. And that was my point in writing a letter and learning my culture when I went. Yes. Uh, for your legacy here for the last golden years here, what, what is your vision about uh, what you hope to manufacture and, and urge people locally here to uh, do? Yeah, create job creation. Job creation is what we're on right now, working on putting the manufacturing together so we can create this. That This is an economic tool that uh, probably 50 to 60 percent of it will be reinvested. You know what I'm saying? Because it has to be, it has to be that type of party right now. So I'm asking the athletes like Colin Kaepernick and others who have endorsements to let us use a portion of our endorsements to funnel back into the, into the community in jobs and, and re-education and economic development. Because when I, you know, when I ride here and look at Naperville, man, come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just goods and services, yeah. smooth. That, it's enough for everybody. Isn't, that's my position, that I don't care what nobody says, that you can't tell me 
that it's not enough for everybody to feel like you feel here. To be able to walk out your crib and be able to park for us while they're at. We ain't got a grocery store. Mm -hmm. Not a grocery store. So right now, we have we have a food desert where you can't in park for us. It's gonna be hard to get you fruits and vegetables to make a salad. You gotta go to Chicago Heights, and that's that's crazy to me. So my mission is to open up a, a fish, a fresh indoor fish farm, and a indoor year-round farmers market right next door to each other. So that now we have something healthy. Something that we can actually say that we can put people to work. You can live in Park Forest, you can walk to work. We need, we need to harness our dollars this is the way that we can harness our dollars. And that's one of the biggest things is that we're not, within the urban centers, we're not able to harness dollars so that those dollars can replicate into goods, services, jobs in those communities. And until we do that, we're not gonna see, we're not gonna see change in as far as Violence is concerned because my thing is, let's take the job, let's take the bread, let's take the bread out of Naperville. Take the bread out of Naperville. Keep the population the same, but let's take the money to North Lawndale, Inglewood, and let's see how long it take before violence start to happen here. Hmm. When it start to creep in, because so and so got a little bread and so and so ain't got no bread. So hey, hey man, we've been peeping at the crib over there. He got some, so let's go on over here and vibe. And that's what's happening in our community. That we're not seeing, we're not seeing the impact of what I don't have, but what they have. And what they have, I'm gonna take. And that's where we gotta change the mindset from being so individual, that it's about a collective. And it's a collective that's gonna change it. And it's a collective that's trying not to let it change also. And that mm. it's, it's some power, it's some, mm. When you look at the number of deaths in Chicago, there's some big money in it. There's some big money in it, or it wouldn't be happening. <laughs> it wouldn't be happening. So we, I, I want to stop and really take a, a critical look at how much money is made in death. Publicly, privately. We don't even know. We ain't got a clue. And the reason we don't have a clue because we're not educated and we're not taught to study that part of it. To study that part of it. For instance, every child that's born got a birth certificate, correct? Right? Y'all know that the birth certificate and the social security card are linked, right? I know both of them have carried huge amounts of dollars unbeknownst to you. How many of y'all know that? How many of y'all know that your birth certificate is worth millions of dollars? Anybody know that? Huh? Y'all kidding me. Come on now, don't be, don't be jiving me. <laughs> don't be jiving me. Yup. See, I, some things people are like, quite kept like my publicist over here. You get kind of nervous about the talk. <laughs> <laughs> you see, some things you really ain't supposed to say. You really not supposed to say because you ain't supposed to know. It bothers me. So, like, the book is cool. Now she's smiling again. The book is cool, but it's so much. Me and um. It's a guy by the name of Steve. You might know Steve. He went to HF, but he's a um, he's a big time philanthropist. And they just opened this thing in Chicago. What is Chicago? Chicago. Um, it's um, regarding Chicago technology and, and arts. Yes. They opened up this big center on um, 13th Street, Street in Chicago. But this guy, he was he's a big guy with money, and he was saying the same thing that. So many times, what you need to say and what you want to say, you really can't say. <laughs> because if you say them, it's ramifications. See, 